Track tensioner reseal, field reseal. This will happen to you no matter what. This will happen to you one day. There's nothing you can do about it. I mean, you can fix it. I can fix it for you. I can fix it, give me a call. Satisfaction guaranteed. Because there's nothing worse than just assuming you can reseal a tensioner and the piston's and then you're stuck, so. You gotta tailor your repair to the situation. Give us a call, give us a call. Book now, order your mechanic now. That's what I mean, the aftermarket one. <laughs> you like that sound? <laughs> Join our network, come along with me. Let's go, get in the fucking truck. Welcome back, homies. Today, we're gonna do a uh, track tensioner reseal off of, uh, this is off of Cat 330C. The one track tensioner needed uh, re-chroming. Instead of waiting for the re-chroming and all that, we just did an exchange on one to get us running again. We only had one uh, actual um, exchange anyways, so the other one we kind of have to rebuild or we're gonna take a look at it and I'll kind of go through the whole process with you of inspecting a track tensioner, what to look for, and kind of what to anticipate. When you get a complaint of a guy, like operator says, oh, the tracks keep loosening off, you know, there's a few things we can check and kind of go over before you go pulling your track tensioner out. Cause they're not always easy to get out. Sometimes you got to split the track to get these out, right? There's a few things we can talk about before you go and condemn a tensioner as, as being the problem and going through the work of pulling it. Um, and then if that is the problem, what you can kind of expect when you go into that repair. Because there's nothing worse than just assuming you can reseal a tensioner and the piston's f***ed and then you're stuck. So a lot of times uh, I get call outs for, for track tensioners not holding tension. If, uh, if I can, I just get a replacement like this. And then we just do a swap and then rebuild the old one or send it for reman or whatever. Like sometimes there's core exchange on that. So that's usually your quickest option for turnaround time. Well, I'll get, I'll get into it and I'll show you why we would rebuild it in the field, why you, and, and what to look for to kind of uh, give you an idea of if you should rebuild it or if you should swap it. Um, so here's uh, our bag of seals. I actually got a couple extra sets because these are fairly common. It's a Cat 330, it's the same tensioner I think on a three, 25 and a few other models and a few different sizes use the same tensioner. So I keep an extra, I'll have an extra set or two of seals. Yeah, this is why I have so much in my truck. <laughs> Cause I buy, instead of buying just one pack of seals for this, I buy three. Instead of buying one grease valve and, and relief, I buy four. Well, they only have three of these or else I would have bought four. I only need one and one. Actually, I need two and two, because I'm gonna put a new one in this one, and our reman actually didn't come with them. So we'll put one in there, one in there, and uh, yeah. So then I'll have a, a couple extra sets of these guys as well. Usually, I wasn't too worried about having extras of those reliefs. Usually it's the uh, nipple on here that fails. These ones are actually replaceable. The aftermarket one, you can replace that. This one, once that's all worn out, and the grease gun doesn't quite like to fit on there or whatever, then it's no good. This one is, this one doesn't look bad. Uh, one of them was, uh, you couldn't even keep the grease gun on it. So we'll just replace them both. It's cheap insurance, man. And this one actually, the little ball, there's no ball in the end of it. So whether that's, I'm not sure if it's missing or if these don't have them originally. The, uh, the couch mechanics will tell me, I'm sure. It was a joke, you guys, relax. The original ones, uh, it's hit and miss with these things. Sometimes the OEM ones are, um, or sometimes the aftermarket ones are kind of, they don't quite fit right sometimes. So OEM's nice, but sometimes these little parts, that valve alone from like cat can run you like 100, 100 something bucks, right? For that little thing. So, and you can get these for like 20 bucks aftermarket. Um, I don't know what your prices are in the States. I don't know. But uh, the last one I got was a deer, like from the dealer. The last one I bought was a deer and it was a hundred and 120 bucks for just the, the grease valve. Uh, we'll put two of those aside, two of these aside. 
All right. Watch your dicky do. Watch your uh, watch your eyes. And you can see a couple of little little dinks, but this one should uh, should reseal. Should. Um. How do we how do we explain this, Brandon? Because we get comments about, oh, why wouldn't you do it this way, or why wouldn't you just replace that, or why wouldn't you just throw a new one in? These are they're not high hour machines, but they're demo machines. The undercarriage on them is fairly is you know past its good life, let's call it. So we try to keep uh, keep that in mind when we're doing repairs. It wasn't too bad for me to rip these out. These ones on the cats you can actually get without splitting the track. Thanks to a buddy of mine, he actually told me about that. I always used to split the track or some of them would actually cut a little window in the side to get to the back bolts and then just weld it up after. But on these machines, we were able to get the uh, track tensioner out from underneath through, the, uh, through some of the rollers just by, uh, you know, you take all the tension off the track, slack it down, lift it up, block it, and just undo it and flop her down. It's a bit of a bitch to get it back up because that's a solid chunk of steel pretty heavy anyways so, so what I was getting at yeah we could put a brand new one in or you know a brand new tensioner I don't know we couldn't even get availability uh, when we called and then you know we only had one remand so yeah tailor your repair to the situation it's nice to use brand new parts and all new stuff and do it the right way every time that's not reality you get uh, you start doing that and your customers start seeing like these bills that cost two to three times as much just to fix the machine than it really needed, let's say. I mean, yeah, there's a right way to do things, but a lot of times we're just getting them back in service and, you know, back making money in a reasonable amount of time and for a reasonable cost, right? A lot of these, you know, your customer's not an open checkbook, so when you're, you know, you're assessing your repair, uh, like this situation, the most cost effective and and quick way for me to get them back in service is to replace one with a reman and reseal this one myself because like as you can see this piston is not uh oops it doesn't need my brake clean bottles leaky piece of premises man so i said the piston didn't look too bad we can get away without re-chroming this and you'll see what I'm talking about. Like this, yeah, that that needs re-chroming on, uh, like if we were re-manning this and redoing the undercarriage and gonna reseal those for like a fresh undercarriage, I would get these re-chromed. Given the situation and the timeline, it takes a week for these to get re-chromed. Uh, we don't have a week. And you can see where the majority of the wear is on these, right here. That's where it rides 90% of the time is in this area. When the undercarriage is even brand new, it very rarely is it going to be riding. The seal will not be in here. And I'm not even going to put, when I put these back together, I'm not even going to compress them that far. I'll leave them out just so that we don't start rubbing them, those on the seal. For those of you wondering why we're putting a rusty piston in, that's why I'm not re-chroming these. I'm not going to wait. This realistically, this isn't even going to come into play down here, like where the seals ride, right? And because this undercarriage is worn, these pistons, when I uh, put them back in and tension them up, they're probably going to be riding somewhere out here. So that's not even going to come anywhere near the seals. We're not worried about that. Like I said, uh, you got to tailor your repair to the situation. Don't be throwing money away needlessly. You know, so when the time comes, if they decide to do undercarriage on this thing, maybe in another, however long they get out of this undercarriage, it really depends on, on the application and what they're doing with the machine. You know, if they're doing a lot of tracking and stuff or not, but, uh, uh, if they decide to do undercarriage, then at that point, you can either do swaps for resealed and remand like that with a fresh piston, or you can uh, re-chrome it or whatever, right? But at, right now, it's just unnecessary time. It adds unnecessary time and cost to this. Get all the schmeg out of there. Okay. Dope as f Okay, that's one part clean. Now the next. We're just gonna clean up our cylinder. Oh, you see that? She f slung it. Just swanged everywhere. 
I'm like one of those Brazilian guys with the big meat cutter thing. I'm making shawarma, you guys. Shawarma. Welcome back to the cooking show. A little bit of that. Big ham. Mm. Got to, that's good enough for your outside. Nice brown, golden crispy, just like that. Uh oh, dipped her in the sauce by accident. My bad. Uh, dirt and contamination, dirty. Yeah, so a couple things, like I was saying, you might run out there with all the good intentions in the world of rebuilding a track tensioner, and then you get there and the piston is chowdered like this, but all the way down. Actually, we'll throw up some picks. I got some picks for you guys. Yeah, I'm actually gonna clean out some more. But I am gonna do one of these. Watch. Oh, f Did you get that? <laughs> yeah, I just did that just to clean all the schmeg that had fallen into the holes, so. There's like a few tubes worth of grease in these things. Uh, actually gotta blow that out, I think. Use some compressed air. Put your lips on it and blow, please. How what? How many zoos are you banned from now? How many zoos am I banned? I'm banned from a lot of aquariums. I don't know if anyone's gonna pick that up. Keeps getting banned from the aquarium. Remember we talked about not using compressed air to, uh, to blow these out? I'll show you why. I'll show you why on this little guy. And you can argue it all you want. I would, I don't mind on this. It's not that big of a deal, but. See that? Well, that's like maybe 50 PSI in there. I know it wasn't super exciting. It wasn't super exciting for you guys at home, but uh, you try doing that with like a big cylinder and sending it, that cylinder will go launch Generally, I don't like blowing pistons out with compressed air, not on like cylinders. Why is it so f***ing windy all of a sudden? Because you turn on the air compressor. Oh, that's right. I forgot. Like a little waterfall. I got a water feature. I blame the apprentice. Seals. Okay, we'll go grab some uh, install tools and we'll tapity tip that in tippity tap this dust seal goes that way keeps the dust out this isn't actually what seals the grease so much as like the uh, seals that go on the piston seal the grease that's just to keep your rod clean uh. let me put a little uh, just a light Skim coat of, of schmeg on there. Okay. That's bearing mount or retaining compound. I don't know. It's going to glue the seal in. Just got to get her started sh straight. Why don't you just use a seal installer? Seated, baby. Oh, ooh. POV, <laughs> you are as... <laughs> oh, f***. <laughs> POV, you're a seal at the zoo. <laughs> anyway. Lots of f***ing schmegma. If you're using picks, make sure that they're f***ing pointed towards your face. That's a, that's a tight seal, and I know tight seals. <laughs> that's why I'm bad from the zoo. <laughs> I can't. I'm sorry. <laughs> Put our backup rings. Oh, I'm just now. I'm, now you got me all 
fucked up because these ones are not split. The old backup rings are split. Uh, I don't have them because they kept them, but the old backup rings have a split in them and then you just wrap them around. These ones don't, so we actually have to put them over. And you can't just like cut those? You, I don't like doing that. Because they're, they're, they're split on an angle. They're not split like this. Oh. Like, they're not cut straight. They're, like, sliced so that they kind of overlap each other. Okay, I see. So, rewind. Pretend I didn't actually put these seals on yet. I just schmoo those up. Now, now the fun part. This is actually... We talked about this before. Do you guys have a deep fryer here? Or a kettle? Can we boil some water? I don't know if this is going to get them warm enough but it should work we are uh, just heating these up we talked about this before with the other one well, uh, that cylinder reseal we did oops but these backup rings the Teflon uh, if you heat it up usually the, the best thing you can use is like a, a little deep fryer or a little oil bath and uh, heat them up and they get nice and soft and easily uh, you can stretch it over a little easier and then once you get them stretched over you can heat them again you can kind of push them back into place just don't want to stretch them too much because they won't go back after a while so i got lots of extra seals though just in case we f these up you can already feel it fairly soft there we go nice and soft what do okay so we got one uh set of backup rings on and I'm just going to drop this other seal down I'm just heating these uh, Teflon rings up a bit that bottom one I already started heating it so it's pretty well back home and once those are a little more relaxed I'll drop the uh, o-ring down over top of them but the heat just reapplying heat to them once they're on here kind of helps shrink them back down a little more back to their their natural state and then too, when we stick them in the bore, everything will kind of get pushed into place. So. Just like that. Times two though, you gotta do the top ones now. I might not explain this 100% right. It goes on the back side of the seal. So if pressure's on this side, it goes on the, there goes uh, pressure o-ring backup rings right and that's why we got two stacked up for the double double seal on here but uh they're just like a reinforcing seal like a reinforcement for your o-ring essentially because just an o-ring just having the o-ring in here you can get fluid pushing past that o-ring then when you got the backup ring there it kind of gives it well backup to you know uh kind of reinforce the seal without using like a lip seal or something um, backup rings you'll find on uh, a lot of hydraulic applications, stuff with higher pressure. Um, like inside relief valves, you'll have backup rings on the cartridge that seal the, uh, the O-rings inside the relief. They'll usually be backup rings with each one of those O-rings. So if you do go and reseal a relief, make sure you're putting those backup rings on the right side where they're supposed to go. Take pictures, that kind of stuff. A lot of times, they, like we mentioned, they have a little split. They'll have a little slice in them, so. When you throw these uh, Teflon backer rings, if it does that on you, that big loosey, you know, and then when you go to throw it in, that's gonna get pulled and caught like that gland seal that we showed you. The gland seal, that's why I said it might have failed is because somebody might have put it in like that and it <laughs> Anyways, don't be alarmed when that happens. It's not a huge deal. It's gonna happen when you stretch it over something like this. I'll show you when we hit it with the heat gun, what, uh, what happens to it, you'll see. And you just kind of keep the, the heat rolling around it. You can see it moving already. Get a few extra sets. They're fairly inexpensive. You don't want to f*** this up out in the field and say you actually break a seal by accident trying to stretch it on. Then at least you got spares. And then at least you got spares in your truck stock for next time. Because you will find another, you'll you'll come across another one. I almost guarantee it.
and we'll throw our O-ring in here and see. It's still a little bit stretched out there, but that we can live with when it goes to reseal, it'll, it'll push in. There you go. Sorry, was my fat face in the way. Okay, I'm gonna throw her back in now. Put a little schmeg on there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> Getting this thing started, I actually, I was hoping to use my my piston ring compressor to get it started, but it's all f***ed up. So I might use a hose clamp if I have to. I talked about that in the, so we talked about this with the uh, Sunshine Valley video. Here's a, a method, a method for you. Thin piece of cardboard or plastic. Extend your knife all the way. Oh, hold on. Safety first. <sighs> Why am I missing a finger? Oh, I see what he's trying to do. Something hacky, hey, Mr. Vandal. Come well, on, I gotta go this way. Oh, Why? Why is it so hard to come out? It's not like I put it in very far. I just put it. I just put it the tip in. You put the tip in and it's just hard to get out. If only there's like a holding device or something. Oh, look at that. There we go. There we go. Ooh, did you hear that? You may be wondering why I'm using the plastic. It's because I don't want to, uh, I don't want to cut the seals. They've been through enough. Arf, arf, arf. Haven't those seals been through enough today? <laughs> and that's why I'm banned from the zoo. <laughs> Brandon just shakes his head. I love it. Oh, do you guys like those uh, those jokes? So do you get what I'm trying to do here? I don't have my uh, my piston ring compressor. It's all up. It actually rusted together. All the bands are all rusted together because I hardly ever use it. Because I don't real rebuild engines. I'm not a real mechanic. Making a field ring compressor. Old boy taught me this. So this one's for you that don't have old boys to teach you. I'll be your old boy. I just don't have, I just don't have a single one big enough so I got combined two. So I wish I had some kind of like power tool to do this. Power tools. Quick and dirty ring compressor. Piece of plastic to protect our seals. They've been through enough. <laughs> and then just some hose clamps. You can also use a piece of like thin cardboard or something, like a beer box, you know, from your case of beer. That actually works really good for gasket material too. So always keep a case of beer in the truck. Now we put our safety glasses on. Yeah. Okay. Ooh wee. Push it a little too far. Hater's gonna say it's fake, but I'm just kidding. Yeah. Actually, I might pull it out a little bit because the the corrosion is just starting to hit the seal there. But well, whatever. It'd be fine. Don't look at that. Yeah. <laughs> it's as good as it's good as we can hope for, given the circumstances. Uh, something probably went <clears throat> underneath the track frame and got stuck. Not really, no. This bracket's actually to keep the... Uh, this is like a safety to keep this valve in here from shooting out when you undo it. These tensioners, that's a, a, good, a good point. I'm glad you brought that up, Brandon. These valves under... Um, when they're on the machine, they're under tension. There's quite a bit of pressure. There can be quite a bit of pressure on that valve. So don't go taking your impact and hammering it out. I do take it out all the way sometimes. As well, I Use your judgment. After you've done these enough, you realize when there's actually pressure in there. Like if the track is tight and you zip that thing out, it could come flying out. Or 
Uh, another instance that might happen is if you have a broken recoil uh, spring retainer and the recoil spring is pushing on your tensioner. Like say you get to a machine and the tracks are tight. And when you go and let the grease out, if you zip that fitting out, that's a lot of force on the tensioner that's being pushed in by the spring. It can actually shoot the tensioner out. Yeah, so a little safety, be careful with that kind of stuff. Be aware what you're doing, know what you're doing. You know, don't be doing this stuff. If you have no clue how this works, call a, call a mechanic. If you're just, you know, if you're totally unsure and you're out of your element, I'm sure you could find videos of how to do a root canal. You're not gonna go do uh, attempt a root canal on yourself, are you? So same goes with this. If you're not confident, go hire a professional to do the job. Call us, give us a shout. I don't give a where you are. Colorado. Texas, the Yukon. Not trying to discourage people from trying it yourselves. Uh, I'm trying to discourage people from f***ing themselves up and hurting themselves. That's really, uh, I'd feel bad if I found out somebody hurt themselves because they watched one of our videos and decided to try it themselves. Because uh, we got the disclaimer in there for a reason. <laughs> We aren't doing this as a how to fix your machine on the cheap. This is more, not so much educational, it's more trying to show you guys what we do. And the guys that are doing this, you know, maybe you haven't come across this particular job yet and you can see what it's like to do this job. I mean, at that point, you're already a mechanic. You already got this stuff pretty figured out. Maybe you just don't have, you know, you haven't come across that yet, right? Yeah, like I said, if you're not sure, call a professional, call us. We are the professionals. Here's the, uh, the reman bracket. Here's the one I just strained out. It took me five minutes and it's not, it's not perfect, but whatever. Uh, when you put these valves in, um, that's another little tip for you. Don't, uh, don't put the valve in until you get the thing up in place. Cause if you drop it when you're fighting with it and you bust your valve off, then that's no good either. Same with when you're shipping it in the back of your truck, right? If it starts rolling around and it, takes out the grease valve, that's no good. Like I said, these things aren't, these aren't cheap. They're surprisingly expensive. <laughs> awesome, man. There you have it. Cat track tensioner reseal. Field resealed. Uh, that one's a reman. This one actually looks like uh, they replaced the piston with a new piston, because it's got the part number here. It's not all uh, smashed up and used. So they must have went and just bought a new piston for that. So the biggest deciding factor with resealing these is a lot of times the corrosion on your your piston and your cylinder, that kind of thing. Uh, if it's too corroded, you'll have to get them re-chromed. That adds to your your lead time on your repair. Sometimes it is quicker to buy a reman. That was the situation here. One we could uh, repair, the other we just figured it was quicker to reman. So this is a total of it. I took it apart yesterday, it'll go back together tomorrow. The plan was to originally do it all in one day. Uh, it doesn't always go according to plan, uh, especially with track tensioner stuff and undercarriage stuff. Sometimes you can have a bit of a loop there. You guys like this? Uh, like, comment, subscribe. Leave comments, actually. That's huge. Uh, we like to see what you guys want to see. And then it gives me, you know, ideas on what to, what to kind of get these guys out for. Because I don't bring them to every job. I only call them when I have something interesting, like, you know, that you guys comment on. So um, let us know what you want to see. And we'll do our best to accommodate that. Now for reinstall. You won't get to see that. You can't come to this site. You're not invited. I'm sorry. Yeah, check us out at uh, Tecamo HD, wherever the f sticker is. Check us out at TecamoHD.com. Check out our website. There's more resources on there. So for your heavy duty parts, check out Fortis HD. For uh, equipment rentals, Rent One USA. Yeah, so Rent One and Fortis HD are big supporters of our channel. So, um, big shout out to them for. Well, I'm gonna do this shit regardless, but it wouldn't be filmed without them. So, <laughs> you could thank them. Go over to their websites, check their stuff out. They actually have a channel as well. So, check their stuff out. Uh, these videos wouldn't happen without uh, those guys. So, yeah, thanks and keep watching keep letting us know what you guys want to see i don't know did you like this you want more of this uh like comment subscribe mwah, mwah, mwah.
Oh my god! That's so sick! Just like that. That's it's Mike. Mike, say hi. <laughs> oh, I go. F oh, what? Oh, the sun came out. Lane Graham service truck. Thank you for your submission. Pretty Gucci. Daddy Likey. Nice truck, man. F750. Was that an auto crane body on that thing? Is it yours or is it your company's? Let us know. Getting after it on a Bobcat. Has that got a mulching head on it? Yeah, anyways, uh, cool photo. If you wanna see yours featured, uh, if you wanna see your truck featured, shoot us some pictures of it. Give us some action shots. We're more likely to pick those. We wanna see that crane right out. Fully erect, pulling something big. Bigger the better. That's what we always say in the biz. I wanna see the real dirty stuff. Send me your dirty truck pics. Email your photos to media at techmohd.com. The link's down here. The link's right here. The link's here, down be below, below me, in the description box, I mean. Like, come on, guys. Okay, bye. <laughs>